What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Salty Nerd Podcast. We're covering the House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 1. We're here together. We have a full house, too. Go to the group shot. We've got a big-ass table full of people, full of nerds. It's going to be awesome. Dutch Butters is here. Hello. What's up, bro? How you doing? Jude is also here. Hello. Super fan. <clears throat> Matthew Kadish producing, as always. Yep, I am here. And special guest, Charles, the sea snake of himself. What's up? <laughs> Hey man, where's, your, where's your head? Thank you very much. Where's your mop head? Yeah. You, next time I expect a mop head a mop and a sweater. Head. That's right. And a sweater. I look like the, ass, the, the actor himself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about heavy spoilers on this, too. We're going to be talking about the entire episode, the ins and outs. We've got two experts in the franchise, uh, book readers and everything, so it's going to be full. Um, I am none of those things. I just watch the show <laughs> yeah. and go, oh, that's cool, Speak dragon. Summer child. <laughs> that's Bro. a cool ass dragon. Yeah, look at dragon. What's that? Sasarax? What's his name? <laughs> I will help you. Lisa Satarax. <laughs> <Lisa. laughs> Sirex. Deep Sirex. Sirex. See? I'm going to get corrected the entire that, time. That's Rainier's dragon. Um, see, this is why we bring these people in. <laughs> The true nerds. All right. So, uh, Jude, do you have a synopsis? Are we, we're just going in this cold? He does the shows. Oh, you do the shows. Did you prepare for the show? I did not. All right. <laughs> oh hey. I was under the impression Jude was doing it. I All right. do the shows. You always do the shows. So, um, the show immediately picked up from the end of the immediately last Immediately picked yeah. up. Yep. Right off the bat. Yep. There and, you go, go. And I... <laughs> Okay, so here's something. I want to get this the out of the way. The kid got killed. Okay. With yeah, the so, so the son. Yeah. What was his name? The son Lucer- who died? Lucerus. He Lu- was, so Lucerus was the second of Rhaenyra's oldest children with Lenor. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was basically, he was he on was a mission. strong boy. So what happened is that Rhaenyra sent both of her sons on missions to make packs with certain houses, certain mm-hmm. parts of the Seven Kingdoms. Jay Saris, who's the oldest and the heir, he basically got the harder one where he went to the north and he went to the Vale mm-hmm. to kind of make packs with them to get Rhaenyra support. Mm-hmm. Now, the it's north. It's like it was a harder journey. Yes. It was a longer journey. So she sends the older boy. She's like, Luke, you're just going to go over here. And well, everybody yeah. everybody thought he was going to get a warm welcome. Because he basically, with Lucera, and so just I'll finish Jaceris real quick. So with Jaceris, obviously okay. going to the Vale. Rhaenyra's mother is from the Vale, so that would be the easier one. Sure. The harder one would probably go to the North, which we see in the beginning of this episode. Yeah. So Lucerus. I can't wait to talk about that in a second. Oh, yeah, though. I know. Lucerus, his was simple. Just go to the Stormlands, treat with Boris Baratheon, who's much more truculent than his father, Boromund, who I think was, he's related to Rhaenys, the queen he never was. Hmm. So he gets there, as we saw, Vagar's there, just like, shh. Big <laughs> ass, that big ass dragon, right? Which means right? Yeah. Aemon's there. Aemon. There was who is still the coolest character in the show, by is. the way. <laughs> Absolutely. And so there's past beef between them because Lucerus is the one who took out Aemon's eye. Right. And so basically, Boros is just like, well, you, you, you're not just some lapdog for Rhaenyra whenever she needs something. So he said, okay, you want, you want my loyalty? You want the Stormlands fealty? Pick one of my daughters you're going to marry. And the problem is that Lucerus was already betrothed, already betrothed to some, one yeah. of Damon's daughters. I think Bela or mm-hmm. one of them. It's... Um... You probably Ray- Raina? Raina, probably. Raina. Raina, yeah. Raina and Bela, those are Damon's daughters with... So he's Bela. already promised to somebody else, and yes. they're saying, you're not going to get our fealty until you exactly. marry one of us. So now he's this kid, basically, this yeah. kid's in a spot where he can't say yes. And then yeah. Aemon is just like, okay, I'll let you go if you take out one of your eyes. I won't maim you. Here's the knife. You can do it. You know, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm not here to fight. They almost get into it. Boros is just like, I don't want this happening. Yeah, don't put house. this on my Don't do this porch. in my house. Yeah. <laughs> and so then what happens is that Smart guy he is, Lucerus gets the heck out of there. Problem is, there's a storm, mm-hmm. a very heavy storm. I mean, storm lands. Come on, storm. yeah, 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 it makes sense. And then Aemon's already gone. I don't know how the hell he got out of there so quickly, but a- you see, Vagar's gone. He's like, <laughs> so it's just like bad to worse. And so he's going. Arax, who is Lucerus's dragon, freaks out. He's freaking out because of the storm. And mm-hmm. so then they're going. They're trying to get out of the storm. And then Aemon is basically now on Vagar, trying to bully. Lucera. But he can't yeah. control Can his I dragon. Can pause for a second right. to there talk guys. about what happened in the book? Go ahead. <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> prior to them meeting in the sky, yes. so uh, Aemond is there to, he was sent there to basically pick a bride. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, in order to uh, make sure that they have um, them as their um, ally. Ally, yeah. So, while he, there's, I think, three daughters. Four. Uh, and... He likes these ones over here, but there's one that he doesn't like, and she gets real fucking offended. And then when uh, Jace 
uh, or sorry, Luke, yeah. when Luke uh, is like, I'm not taking out my eye and he like beats it. The sister that didn't get chosen was like, oh, I'm glad you chose my sisters. I want a man with all of his parts. Exactly. And she like she like berates him for being a pussy. Whoa. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I'll show you a pussy. And then he goes and gets on his dragon. No way. And then he goes. Is that what Luke. caused it? Yes. yes. Oh, because in the show, it. it makes it seem like it was almost like a. The show wants you to think it's an accident. It's an because accident. the show wants you to ride this line between who you feel bad for and who yeah, you feel yeah. right. for. And that oh. bothers me sometimes. But we'll get, we'll get okay. to that. So, All right. so, and then you saw what happens. Yeah, yeah. Basically, at first. So, Rainier is out looking for her son's body. When we see yeah. when we see her in the beginning of the episode. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's looking out. for proof. Yeah. Keep in mind, she just gave birth and it didn't go. Well. It didn't go. It yeah, she lost yeah. another it kid. She yeah. yeah. Daughter. So, yeah. she's, her body is physically dealing with that. Yeah, I watched and the last episode. And that's why she sent her sons on these, on these missions because she couldn't physically yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 So, she's going through a lot. It's a lot of stuff. And so then she unfortunately finds her. She friend. finds the wing and the cloak. Yeah. And all that. yeah. She's not going to find Luke because Vagar ate him. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. He's gone, gone. Yeah. He's a pile of dragon, dragon, dragon poop, poop somewhere. <laughs> so, and, right. and if you noticed, this was actually just really well done and very intentional. She said three words the entire episode. Yep. Oh, I want Eamon. That was the only line that she had in this entire show. Yeah. Or entire episode. She was acting her ass off this oh entire she episode. So good. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. did a really good job. Yeah. Let's talk about the beginning of this uh, season two, episode one. We get to go to the north. Yeah. To see the wall. This is what I loved about this episode. Yeah. Yes. I, I, real quick, just a general <laughs> thought on the entire episode. I, I feel like whoever is in charge has learned some lessons from Game of Thrones itself. And they're like this entire episode is really slow and methodical mm -hmm. and it's really all about the the politicking and the family drama and, and the, the and the, there's like there's no action no nope. there's no need for like over the top sex scenes we're like look at us we're game of thrones it's like no there were sex scenes and there, we'll get to that <laughs> <laughs> it's like but it was like this is what we thrive at doing is yes. all this inner politicking i love and it. the world building yeah and you expand the world because it was very most of season one was very contained around king's landing and dragonstone Sure. Where now we're starting to see, okay, this is what now we're other kingdoms look like yeah. during this time period. Um, we forgot to mention something. The that? new intro. Oh, the weaving of the... So oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, you like it better than the other one? I don't like it better. I like I like it. Do you think I they're going to change it for every season? I Probably. think it's cool. a very interesting way to continue to tell this story about the weaving of these tales yeah, a as a tapestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I and, thought and it was really cool. And I think it's smart to give it its own identity more. So obviously this yeah. is part of the Game of Thrones verse, but mm -hmm. it's still its own thing. And it's a prequel. So it's Keeping that song, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keeping song, that song. Well, that song, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so something happens in this scene uh, at the wall that just gave me so much yeah! about <laughs> the fact that uh, we are throwing shade at season seven and eight of Game of Thrones because they did something in season mm -hmm. seven and eight of Game of Thrones that is so not... You're gonna in... have to be specific. Yeah, spoil it, go <laughs> ahead. I'm about yeah. to. Go ahead, <laughs> don't, don't, don't bury the lead. Okay, yeah. so at one point, uh, Craig and Stark is telling a story about how good Queen Alysanne took her yes. dragon to the wall. Right. And this is this is in the book uh, yes. Fire and Blood. And yeah. there's a a they go to the wall as like for fun, and they just go to see like what's up with the wall. And good Queen Alysanne is trying to get her dragon to go past the wall, and her dragon won't fucking do it. And Silver this is the wing. only time her dragon has ever disobeyed her. Yeah. Mm. And so she's trying to make it seem like, oh, ha, 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 I'm just being silly over here. And she keeps trying to get her dragon to do it, but she doesn't want other people to know that she's trying to get her dragon to do something her he dragon won't, won't do fucking do. He won't, yeah. go for, he won't go north of the yeah. wall. Yeah. Uh, Danny's just... Popping all, popping, popping yeah. in, no. popping out. Oh, that's right. And I was yes. like, you! Yes, that's right. Because <laughs> Danny should not have been able to no. do that at all. No, her no. dragons do not go past the wall. They're just like, nope. That's Is it a magic thing? It's a magic thing. It's a magic thing. thing. Okay. <clears throat> because they did go past the wall and it ended badly. One count. of them died and turned into a zombie dragon. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> no. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. It's not canon. It's not canon. <laughs> that was a bending off of wise. To, to <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. interesting. We're finding even more faults with the original show now. Oh, so many. Interestingly enough, they actually de-aged Cregan Stark. I always call it Cregan. They get Cregan. Cregan Stark. Is he the dude in the beginning of the uh, yes. ep yeah. this episode? Cregan? Yeah. Okay. It, can somebody educate me on what relationship, like how far down the family tree do we have to go to get to him? 
Uh, it's like 300 years. Eating. From like Ned Stark to him. From Ned to him, it's probably 200 years. 200 years. Yeah. Because as you remember, we're about 110, 120 okay. and years. And Bran the Builder is... He's way farther. Way farther than that like 8, as well? Years. Okay. Again, I'm, yeah. ca I'm pretty casual with yeah. this stuff. I'm going to... So basically, right now, we're about 180 okay. some odd years from Game of Thrones. Because okay. Game of Thrones was roughly about, about 300 years since Aegon's Conquest. I love that he was rocking that sword on his back, though. Yes, bro. Yeah. That was ice. He was rocking yeah, ice. Yeah, he was rocking ice. That the first thing I noticed, happy. I was like, oh, that's a Stark. Yep. Like, look, <laughs> oh, at that, yeah. look at that motherfucker with yep. his big-ass knife. And yeah. the thing I liked awesome. is that they kept consistent with the accent, particularly that. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sean Bean mm -hmm. and Richard Madden had. Where it almost 100%. Kind of sounds like a North. It sounds like they were trying to do it on purpose. Yeah. But, yeah. It, but I like the fact that they were like, yeah, this is how the North talks. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. not just like, a, oh, this is how Kit Harrington talked and, and, and Sean Beam. Like, no, this is the North. Yeah. And this is all, the accent. This is the accent for the right. North. I like it. And that's just great world building, great continuity. And yeah. that's just smart. You had yeah. the Scottish to be from the North. Is that, is that what it is? A bit. Or maybe Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> a little Geordie. <laughs> um, so the, the, they're having a pretty in-depth conversation about what the wall means. And I, I like we already know and we already like, oh, I think they said winter is coming at some point. In oh, of course they too, do. Right? They, yeah, they, they have they to. It's the start. Yeah. Um, those are the words. <laughs> those are the words. And also they showed the beginning of the Night's Watch because I think the Night's Watch, start. I think it started forming <clears throat> around oh. Jaehaerys's age. Yeah, I, I found it. No, no, no. The Night's Watch goes back yeah. thousands of years. Oh, that's but right. But yeah. I did find that's it right. interesting that they – went into this thing with 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 the Starks they have one and they do a lottery and yeah one, yeah, one yes. in every 10 person in the north or whatever and it's not a punishment it's no a, it's an honor and it's an honor didn't to used to be a wall honor. made of like yeah convicts yeah. it didn't yeah. used to be that it used yeah. to be an honor yeah everybody gets put in everybody can get chosen it's an honor if you go mm -hmm. unless you're one, one, in, one in ten dudes yeah. playing the watch this is how it goes i like yeah, that so yeah and that's and it showed you how the degradation once we reach Robert's reign, yeah, yeah. How yeah, far things have fallen. Yeah, they just send every skivvy up there, like just, <laughs> just go get out of my sight. Yeah. What, what do we got in the dungeon? Yeah, <laughs> some of the wall, and that's what they would do. They yeah, yeah. could go begging down south and be like, "Hey, your dungeons, give it to yeah. us." All right, what happens next? Talk to me, folks. Um, we've got the the conversation on the wall. It's pretty mm -hmm. serious. I, I like that. I like the whole mm -hmm. kind of reestablishing why it's there. And he's like, "Do you really think we're just here to keep out raiders?" He's like, really? <laughs> and also, they talk about a little of the history of Torin Stark, uh -huh. the king who knelt in the north, and just basically the honor, like honoring the vow that they made to Aegon way back when. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the letter, the the raven that came for Jaceres, Gis because he didn't know yet. They didn't know in the north yet. So, but but it's kind of funny because first uh, he basically says like, you know, I can't, you know, demand the wall, but I'll give you. 2,000 old guys who are kind of <laughs> yeah, like yeah. towards the but end of their... They were all badass. But they're old northern they're old guys. old northern guys. Yeah, man. So, so what, hap what happened next? Um, I think Princess Rainus, is that her name? Rainus. 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 She, came, she came back on her dragon and... and uh, so they've got her out on patrols. And just Doctor Who came up to her and... and Doctor Who. <laughs> it's like, we're going to go do this. And she said, no, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. She really does not give a shit what Damon thinks, uh, does she? Yeah. She's just like, you're not... Because he wanted to go to King's Landing right. and just torch them and kill them. <laughs> well, she, well, she had that, that comment where he told her, we're going to go do this. And she... He goes, that's an order. And she goes, He's like, you're not oh, would, would that you were king. And, yeah. And it just burned. Damn. Yeah, like, <laughs> you burned no authority. It, it just burned, walked away from him. Yeah. It burned equals. worse than correct. She's yeah, a Roxas. princess. Yeah. He's a prince. Yeah. And like, uh, where mm -hmm. they where they are in a court, uh, like, to Rhaenyra, the queen, like, He's her husband, uncle, and <laughs> she's her aunt. They're they're equal. Husband, uncle, and aunt niece. All right, Ooh. those Targaryens. There's there's <laughs> wacky Targaryens. Oh, sweet special. <laughs> and they have history too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a fun little back and forth though, because I, I don't know enough about like okay, who's in charge? Because he is the queen's husband. Are they married? Yeah. Right. And yeah. So, and, so he's and, technically the king well, the as far as their consort. side is concerned. Consort. King consort. He's, he's the prince consort. Okay. So just to lay out, one of the things why is because. Rhaenyra has been gone on her vision quest for a couple days now. She's uh -huh. been mourning. So yeah. She's been mourning. So, like, there's, like, who's in charge? So, Damon wanted to go kill Vagar, but he knew Caraxes doesn't have a chance by himself. Right. He needs 
You need but double team. Ma but Melise, her dragon, that's Rhaenys' dragon. Mm -hmm. Together, both of them could probably stand a chance against Vagar, kill Vagar. Yeah, because I mean, in the last episode of season one, they had a conversation about how many dragons each side has. Yeah. And they have yeah. way more. Mm -hmm. The other side has more powerful dragons. Yes. And this feels like the beginning of like, fuck those dragons. They'll do what we say, mm -hmm. you know, th with with uh, Damon's attitude about like, no, get the fuck back on your dragon. Yeah. We're going out. And she's like, no, my yeah. dragon needs to rest. It's tired. And, yeah. ju and, just to, and just to make sure like where Rhaenys was, she was patrolling the gullet because mm -hmm. they've started the blockade to really box King's Landing in mm -hmm. because the sea snake now has his fleet. But obviously, if King's Landing tries to fight back, having dragon power above that would probably help a lot. So is that's there, where they're at. Is there some kind of like Cold War thing going on with the dragons? It's like some kind of like a army agreement, some kind of rules of war where they're not supposed to bring the dragons in. And if they bring the dragons in, then it's just like next level. It's like, kind it's of like, a nuclear It's like option. DEFCON 2 versus yeah. DEFCON 1. Well, yeah. well, you know what I'm saying? The thing because, here, and uh, they, they kind of mentioned this in the show, like there's never been a situation where the Targaryens were fighting Targaryens. Mm -hmm. So there was never a situation where dragons would be turned against each other. So this is like completely new territory for gotcha. everyone. I mean, except for an old Volantis. I mean, I think the, nobody the, knows what happened. The one yeah. time that that did happen before was during the reign of Maegor. Mm -hmm. That was about it. That was probably hmm. the closest we got, but it was not a full blown civil war. It's just like everyone was against Magor. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I do kind of get a kick out of all the little civilians and stuff in, on the ground. Oh my God. A dragon shows up. They'd also go, Dragon! But can, yeah. can you blame yeah. And they run off. And it's just like, <laughs> can you blame them? Uh, I'll be freaking out <laughs> too, man. Funny. It's like, you know, you remember watching the original Game of Thrones show mm -hmm. and there was no dragons in it. Well, I guess there was, but it was like. It took a couple seasons for them to right, get big. Right. Yeah. And now the people are just like, ah, dragon. Because you know, <laughs> it's, it's so like, common. Like, okay, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, I mean, it's a literally a living, breathing nuclear weapon. So like, right. no part of that. Right. So. Uh, we have a quick scene with the sea snake uh, who's looking like he's in rough shape. He's recovering yeah. from his injuries, but he's still walking around with a cane. Uh, and he's just, I think he's looking at his fleet and his fleet is pretty. Well, that's his flagship. That he's yeah. And it's all, it's kind of jacked up. And his guy's like, look, it's going to be a while before. <laughs> the mass is all broken. <laughs> it's all broken. And <laughs> I don't remember what, was it just because of the war that he was in last season? That, yeah. That, well, he that, disappeared. Oh, he was gone for a long right. time, right? Yes. Yeah. He was gone for a long time. Like, they was, all thought he was dead. And he was yeah. really injured and they yeah. didn't know if he was going to make it back or not. Yeah. And now they have like control of the steps and then that's going to come with its own consequences. Probably. Yes, it is. Two. It yeah. is. The triarchy. Yes. Okay. Do you guys have any thoughts on, on the sea snake? Uh, on this scene with him, Not with his, a lot his ship I think this is a little bit of a setup for what's what's coming down the line. But as far as it, it being important in this episode, it's not. Okay. Well, well we right. did we did get introduced introduced to that new character. I forget his name, but uh, the the guy who supposedly rescued him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, he's Al like it's like Alan? a dock master. I don't remember his name. Oh, the shipmaster guy. But, yeah, I guess. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm assuming since we had such a big introduction to this dude, he's gonna he's gonna he's, yeah, gonna he's gonna matter at some point down the line. Yeah. I forget yeah. his name. Is it Alan? I don't know. Adam, Alan. Well, I mean, he's a new sidekick after what happened to Vaymond. Yeah. Uh, I also like, um, I like the the character of the sea snake. Uh, what, what's his name? Corliss uh, Valerian? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like Corliss. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, people who've read the book, they know that he plays like a very long and involved role. And so like, it'll, oh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see like, you know, what they do with this character going forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So I think we're back now to um, the, yeah we're back in King's Landing now. Um, and, and here's an interesting Allison's getting well before we get to that serviced. He's getting that. There's a nice little note. <laughs> getting her oil change. Get, getting her oil change. <laughs> getting for a joyride. Um, if anybody yeah. needed a good time in the sack, it was Allison. It was definitely her. Yeah, for sure. She needs <laughs> to loosen up a little bit. Even while Viserys was alive, it'd been a while. Oh yeah. Um, but the thing is, before that, I like the little uh, nice little note that they did in King's Landing where. We saw the scorpion bolt. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. You know, um, there's origins behind that. I, st yeah, I still we, don't see how those things work. We, right we just kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a dragon flying. Well, it'd been a couple like it'd, half it'd be, a mile up in the sky, and you're gonna shoot it with a crossbow bolt. That's not gonna. Work. Hey, if <laughs> come on. How else are you gonna take it down? You're yeah. not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna hit it. You ever tried to shoot something in the air? It's flying around. I mean, and this isn't helping. Yeah, like oh. play tabs. Oh. <laughs> you know, One it, single shot. It, it it did work in season seven. Yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> bullshit. And it, and, it, and it actually that's we don't what, talk about season seven. We don't talk about season. Seven. <laughs> and then it also worked like the whole uh, origin came from the Dornish when they were fighting against Aegon. And yeah, that's actually how they killed Meraxes and the first Rainies okay. was because of a scorpion bolt. So we're back on King's Landing, and we've we're getting the um the green side. 
family, <laughs> right? The family politics. We've got the uh, the sister who has aged up like twenty years in this movie. Helena, in this show. Hel- Queen Helena. Oh, yeah. Helena. Um, she is uh, Aegon's wife. Uh, yes. Is she and, 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 yes. sister and, sister. Sister and sister and sister? Sister, sister. Okay, wife. I was gonna, sister. I was getting sister confused. Wife. I'm like, aren't they brother and sister? But yeah. they're also married. It's Targaryen, it's Targaryen. It's Targaryen. I, okay, fine, fine, fair enough. <laughs> and they now have two kids. Well, no, they have them they last had season. Them. They had them last season, well, but they're older. They have now. three kids if you go, by <sighs> but they're not. They're just doing two kids, I guess. We'll okay. get to that. We'll get to that once we okay. get to I the have end. issue with She that. says something in this scene when the, the, they're kind of like walking into the nursery. She has visions, she man, has and visions. nobody yes. fucking pays and attention she, to and her. And she says, watch out for the rats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has prophetic dragon And dreams. anytime this lady speaks, pay attention. Yes. Because it's going to happen yeah, in like does. the next two well, seasons. So, 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 all the rats are all the house servants. They're, everybody's on the take in this movie. In this, in, in, as we do you think that you think had a double meaning? And that's why she's calling them all rats. because And then they panned out and you saw her or handmaidens or whatever, right? And that's who she's talking about. And you think are, so? Because they're they're no. they're no, giving, they're not. No, no what they're he, she's it's talking about what happens later. Later oh. in the episode when the rat catcher, it's well, the rat catcher. To, so to, to to Vader's point though, um, so later on in the episode mm-hmm. with uh, the clubfoot, he, he talks about how the whole house is in the how house. he has basically recruited all of the maids and servants in the in the mm-hmm. castle to be his quote unquote Eyes rats. And ears. Yeah. I'm, I'm right. Yeah. Because so you're right. <laughs> So but, he, it, well, it, it has a double meaning. Yeah, it? I was going to say, I'm like, it has a, okay. That and so, sense. and also the thing, you noticed how weird the maids were being regardless. They seemed very robotic, mm-hmm. like compared to last season. They just, it was just, it was They're just. They're probably trying to stay under the radar so yeah. that Aegon doesn't rape them. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that was the thing that happened. So we see Helena playing with, I think we see playing at least with Jahera, mm-hmm. I think. And so Aegon comes in is asking where Jaehaerys is because he's technically the heir. This is mm-hmm. heartbreaking because Helena is actually a really good mother. Yes. And Alicent was never a good mother. No, right. she sucked. Um, and so that basically what I liked in this episode is they also showed a slightly different side to Aegon as well because it kind of bothered me that they just kind of made him Joffrey Jr. Yeah, I, I got that vibe too. Like they, they turned him into this Joffrey type character, but they also, they showed hints of him being like a normal human being where oh. this guy, this guy mm-hmm. comes up and he's like, look, man, my whole family's going to freaking die if I don't get my sheep back. And he's like, Oh, well, give him his fucking yeah. sheep back. Yeah. I mean, there, there and were scenes in this show where I was like, Oh, he seems you know, semi normal like dude. Yeah. Like when, like when he's getting like undercut on, on the throne and stuff, mm-hmm. it seemed like a more of a human well, being. Well, but well, when they went full Joffrey with the guy, I was like, uh, what was interesting is in the, uh, after show, like interviews, the director talked about how the actor who plays that character basically brought like more like humor and relatability mm-hmm. to the role that nobody like it wasn't written into the scripts or anything like that. It I like I like the actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really so good. so like the actor's the one who's like, yeah, I don't want to be Joffrey 2.0. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want to have to retire from acting after this. Yeah. Okay. Um so uh and, and they gave him a gang of people like a kind of a hang Oh, his, his yeah. little crew on yeah. 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 There's two things I want to talk about regarding Aegon. Um, and you guys all know that I'm going to be like, well, in the book, I know. so, uh, <laughs> Me too. uh, in, in the book, book Aegon is, is more just, he's just kind of a fuck up. And he's just like, I was never going to be King. So I'm just going to enjoy life. And then all of a sudden and he was a trouser snake too. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, Allison and Kristen Cole have incited this. Yes. And Kristen Cole is the one who gets him on board. Kristen Cole says, if you don't take the throne, she's going to come here and she's going to murder you, Helena, and all of your kids. The, so he's doing it to save the his Lord family. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Yes, that's why they called, that's why his name was the Kingmaker. Kristen mm. called the Kingmaker. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. And then I just want to direct your attention to, so we know that there is this lore that the throne decides who is worthy of it. Mm-hmm. And Aegon's just kind of sitting there, chilling. No problems. No problems. I just want you to keep that in mind. Watch that. Watch for that specifically. Yeah. Because remember with, I don't know if they did this in the show. Did Joffrey get cut by the throne in the show? Mm-mm. They kind of were, okay, they didn't do that. All right. Anyway, but yeah. yeah. Jo- Joffrey never took damage from the throne. But the throne looks a lot different in this yeah. show yeah. than it did. Yeah. Yeah. So there is, there's definitely lore about like, if you are worthy to sit the throne, the throne won't fuck and with you. But if you're not worthy, the throne will like, and Viserys. Viserys you know, got he was cut gotten fucked all the up. time. Yeah, and but that this, was because the Aegon chair kid, was rejecting it. The Aegon kid, can, he's hanging out, drinking wine with his mm. buddies on it. Just uh-huh. relaxing. Slouching. Like a slouching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. It, yeah, so Ooh. just remember that. Uh, another thing I really liked about this episode was how uh, Doctor Who kept giving uh, 
the old princess a hard time about not killing every, all their enemies when she Oh, he's dance. burnt about that. You know, this, because that, that when, 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 I, when, me. when I was watching uh, the episode where she burst into Balin's sept on her dragon, I was like, Kill them. She could have ended all of this. Yeah, could have ended yeah, all right there. But, and we I, said that last year. But I Could have like, just fixed the whole thing. I love her response, though. This is not my war to start. Mm -hmm. But it was like, still dumb. <laughs> I don't care. It was still dumb. But, and also, another thing about Aegon that I really liked was that it seems like he's actually taking an interest in his kids. And he's like, hey, yes. I, want, I, want, I want Jaehaerys to be in here while mm -hmm. I'm doing the small Which council. Which his father never did for yes. him. So... And it, oh god, I just. But then the kids started screwing with the dude. With I just connected a dot. Thing. I just Thailand. connected a dot. Poor Thailand. What? Oh fuck that guy! <laughs> <laughs> Leave my yeah. ball alone. No. So he brought his son into the into the uh, high, high, council, uh, the high council, council room council. and a small council. Thank you. And and he's like he's fucking with the dude. Yeah, give him a pony ride. He wants a pony. Like he's <laughs> he's being like. A, a dad. He's yeah. being a dick. He's being a. Yes. He's being a. He's being a, he's dick. being a dick. But he's still being a. He's like, like I'm going. I want to embarrass you in front of your other fellow high council. He's not members. being a king. But then not that son all. is the one that gets it at the end of the show, and he's already. Well, we, we were. I know, but I'm just saying, People like he's no. He's attached. <laughs> he's attached to this kid. I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize it when I was watching it the first time. Like, oh, I, he's just having a. a it's like you if, know, if he's well, doing if, a thing with his kid. You know, the thing is, he's actually being. For his son, what Viserys wasn't for him. Exactly. Yeah. He's just yeah. being a dad. Yeah. He's, he's doing the best he can granted, to be a dad for this kid. Granted, we didn't really, I mean, because of the flashback time jumps, we didn't really get to see England. But from what we saw, it seemed like Viserys didn't really have a relationship with him. It was just yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's like, I, 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 get, I get what they're setting up here. It's like, you, you knew by the title of the show. A son for a son. A son for a son. And you knew that they were focusing on this little kid yes. for a little bit of reason. Mm -hmm. And you know... He's gonna go fucking scorched earth after this episode. Oh, absolutely. literally, literally. So, so, so you know, they were just setting that up, yes. right? So it's like, okay, I know what they're doing. Establish the bond here. It's like, it well, just, it's like, now, now we're all like, I was team black. Now I'm team green. Now my, which team am I again? Yeah, yeah. Now that was a really dick move to go kill the king's son by these fucking idiots. But oh. you know, it's just, it's just, I just don't. So they it, really, they just really keep your brain, yeah, yeah, switching back yeah, and forth, exactly. which is. Good writing, um, right? It I is. Guess that's can, can I just so. point out that uh, Big Bill from Warrior was yes, yeah. Big Bill was he, was he blood? No, he was the Smith. That yeah. came. He had the, the white iron, hair. The Iron Smith. And uh, he came in. He's like, "Sir, we need more iron, and it's very expensive. Can we get oh. paid first? That's oh, Big that Bill. Was yeah. That's Big oh, Bill. And you know what? And, and, and here's an also another thing. He's going to be a very important character nice. going forward. Yeah, that's Hugh, awesome. Hugh, it's Hugh, Hugh the Hammer, right? Or is, Hugh is that his character's name? I think uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to be important. I won't say where. Well, I don't. Yeah. Want to spoil don't spoil it. it. Don't spoil but it. But he's going to yes. be important. There's a reason why they introduced him. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Please. We know him from a, a TV show called Warrior. It's on. Uh, he it, what, it used to be on HBO. I think it might still be on HBO. Yeah. No, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, Netflix now. now yeah. He looked really familiar. I've yeah. I've probably seen. Yeah. Him he's a, he's a great character in uh, in he Warrior. He was in um, Game of Thrones also. He's uh Was he a Baratheon? I didn't know Big Bill was in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he was in Game of Thrones. Oh, no uh, way. No, no you, uh, I think you're thinking of um, of uh, Jagger. Uh, no. Because uh, he, he, he was a one of the, in Game of Thrones, too? Yeah, he was one of the small jobs. Oh, maybe I am. Oh, man, these guys are all connected. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was one of the uh, umbers. Okay. In, in I am thinking one. of Jagger. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So let's get back to the service job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, I, I did Oh, wanna... she's a horn dog, man. What's um, going on can you blame her? What happens directly after... Fucking irked me. What happened? He Fuck hands you. her his white cloak and is like, "Would you mind? You the balls on this man? Oh, that's right. To tell the you are a, you are a knight. You swore an oath. It's bad enough. You're her sworn sword. You are her sworn sword, and you're handing her a just. Well, they have a special put, relationship. Put my Literally. put my cape on, no. sweetheart. Fuck this guy. He just got done servicing her. Yeah, that's his job. He's no, it's not. That's, that's not her job. job. No. His job. She's breaking out no. in the book. Sir. No, that is not no. her job. His Bullshit. job. He's literally sworn to serve. And like, you know look, the, man, no. I just got down macking on you. So, so can you put my cape on for me, please? He so I don't have to sit here like this. Equal. You know what? You know she what? She is though? the queen. But you know what though? He did it behind closed doors. So, so, so to speak. Yeah, this is a person. This is an interpersonal relationship. They don't have a relationship. Oh, I kind of think they do. I think they definitely do. The thing that irked me about that scene in particular is that the reason he turned against uh was it Reyna? Yeah. Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra yeah. is because like you know he slept with her and he felt like oh I I besmirched my honor mm -hmm. by doing that now he's just like well because he was in love with Rhaenyra he was in love with Rhaenyra it's and, not, he, and he expected 
He expected her to, her to give up give everything, everything to run away with him. So then the thing about Kirk Tristan Cole is that he's, he's a basically bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that, but he's also a big ass <laughs> hypocrite, and he doesn't see. Yeah. he's the he, biggest villain because he wants to espouse all these values and whatnot, and being a knight and all that. But he's basically living with that duality where he's basically breaking every law. Mm -hmm. He's killed people brazenly. Mm -hmm. He's now sleeping with a queen. And here's the thing: he has a, zero honor. Oh yeah, he's he. There's a connection here because remember when he before he, be, he was joined the King's Guard. Allison was kind of crushing on him, like, ooh, he's kind of hot. Yeah. And she's the one who kept him from committing suicide. Yes. So that's like, there's a link there. There's already a connection, and mm -hmm. there had been a connection going forward. Yeah, so he just switches the obsession uh, for Rhaenyra to mm -hmm. Alicent, and then he totally gets behind the insanity of stealing, <laughs> literally, the insanity of stealing the throne. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and what is with this dude who's, who, like, you have so a lot of problems with he, this guy. <laughs> well, he's a terrible person. Every time we've seen him have sex, he's like in the in the submissive. Position. Oh, he's That's a, the the, he's, a, he's a bottom. Yeah. Oh, he's the total sure. bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's interesting about that character in particular is like he's like at least from from the books, from what I understand, he he's like the supreme general of like the the Green's army. And he's yeah, also he a, he's also a terrible general. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna he's going to he's. Okay, I won't say anything. Else. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's not get too uh, far ahead <laughs> yeah, of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I want to talk about Otto. Um, shit. Hightower. Hightower, Hightower. thank you. Otto Hightower, real quick. Uh, he's, I can never tell if he is a conniving psychopath or if he's legitimately just trying to do the right thing for his daughter. Oh, he's definitely. Oh, no, he's conniving. He's conniving. Because, conniving. Because they have a conversation, a pretty frank conversation later on in the episode where they're like, she's she's discussing with him, like, look, man, you can't undercut me all the time. You're going to make my word mean nothing to the people who are in charge. Yeah. yeah. And he was, I mean, he sat down, he said, you know what? You're right. I can't do that. Everyone is a chess piece to Otto. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's using everybody. Yeah. But I don't think he's doing it very well. And, and people are rejecting him. He has him. up until this point. And now, but now because of the the monster that he's created, he's totally lost control. Well, he hasn't, we're, we're almost there. He's about to. Because yeah. the thing, because uh, here's another thing too. You saw Laris basically getting his tentacles into Aegon saying like, well. Well, that was a great move, dude. Yes. But uh, when he says, well, he was your father's hand. That was it. Mm -hmm. That was all he had to say. And, and, and this kid yeah. is going to full tilt reject this and, guy. And also one of the big things we saw in the small council meeting is that Aegon, wants to kill Rhaenyra right off. He said, we should have just done this right away. And the problem is that not a lot of the kingdoms, not a lot of the lords are offering fealty or saying like, hey, we'll go with you. Yeah. So I think right now they have, basically they have the reach because I think the Tyrells at this point were, I think it was a child who's in charge at the Tyrells at this point. Mm. So the high towers at this point are very, very powerful, way more powerful than we saw them in Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So his brother is in charge of the family keep, I think Ormond or, or whatever their name is. So Otto's got him immediately, but all these other lords have not really said fealty. And Aegon's just like, what the hell? And he's just yeah. like, you got it. I'm sending letters, dude. And Aegon's getting impatient with him. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Also, there was that, that petition scene where every time Aegon made a ruling, mm. Otto would come up and be like, yeah. actually. Well, yeah, he well yeah. actually him. <laughs> it's not really a good idea. Because also, keep, he, sorry, go ahead. So if you do this, then everybody's going to expect you to do that. Yeah. yeah. He's Which not, he's, not he's not wrong. Because he doesn't know wrong. how to fucking rule. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, keep in mind, like, being a kinslayer is a big fucking deal. It is. And Aegon's just like, well, just kill her. And then in the book, when Aemon comes home after having accidentally or or on purpose killed Luke, like uh he got shit from everyone except for Aegon. Aegon like throws a feast and is like, yo, this bitch he killed. He, yeah, he's excited. Like Aegon doesn't fucking get it. Yeah. And like being a kinslayer is like the the fucking worst. Isn't and he's worst. just like celebrating all it. The, it's the, it's almost it didn't as, hurt Tyrion all that much. <laughs> You don't count. Do you, do you see how stressed out they get when you mention the previous show? <laughs> well, no, that, 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 I mean, that's from the books as well. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But, but there was always that, that thing about how uh, uh, Tywin never believed Tyrion was his actual like offspring. Mm -hmm. So that might have been like a loophole type thing where mm -hmm. 
uh, it turns out that his wife actually did have an affair and Tyrion was like the result of that. Well, the like theory that. is that the Mad King uh, oh, yeah, yeah. either took his liberties, took his liberties, <clears throat> whether it was consensual or not. Mm. And that's how they got uh, Tyrion. And no then the and, Tyrion and, and, killed his and, wife. And, interesting, and he's always punished Tyrion. For and it. interestingly yeah. enough, because uh, Eris had a history of doing that with Rael's handmaidens and Rael dismissed uh, Johanna from her service because he's like, I'm not letting you tame my handmaidens to your whores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so. uh, also in the books, there's always been this longstanding theory that um, Tyrion would be one of the three dragon riders in the books. It would be Danny, John, and Tyrion, mm -hmm. and they would be basically responsible for the fight, dragon fight, heads. And they yeah, represent yeah. the three-headed dragon. I really hope not because that would undermine the Tywin and Tyrion relationship. I like it the way it is. I think it would be dumb if it's another secret Targaryen. Jon mm -hmm. Snow's enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next major plot point in this episode to talk about is the, I think her name is the White Worm. Is yeah, that, Missaria, I, Missaria. Missaria, the White, the White Worm. Uh, she's basically the, the <laughs> spider <laughs> of this yes. show. Spy um, mistress. And uh, she gets, she, I guess, stows away on a ship, makes her way to Dragonstone, and then gets captured by the Armada that's out mm -hmm. there guarding it. And then she gets brought into Damon. And uh, they have a little back and forth. It's her, his ex-lover, wife, whatever. They ain't done um, they ain't done yet. <laughs> they ain't done yet. <laughs> and uh, she, he's basically trying to force information out of uh, her. Yeah. Well, uh, he's trying to use her. Yeah. If, if again, my memory serves correctly, so she was the head of like the whorehouses in mm -hmm. King's Landing, mm -hmm. and so Damon would basically hook up with her whenever he went whoring, <laughs> um, and and then she would like you know get information out of him, and he'd you know buy information from her. And She's stuff like, like Littlefinger and Varys wrapped up in, mm -hmm. in a girl. A yeah, cute girl package. So this this all kind of happens at the same and time. And kind of Melisandre, too, because she's yeah. a little witchy. And the, <laughs> thing, and, the, and the interesting thing, too, is that she basically flips sides and worked for, I think, I forgot why this specifically last season, but she started working for Otto. And then she was just getting paid. She was getting yeah. paid. And then Laris basically burned her whorehouse down. Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And she says, and the, he he confronts her about that in this episode too. And he's like, "You were working for them." She's like, "I'm just trying to get money." Yeah, like, we're just, like I work for whoever pays. <laughs> yeah, <most."> man. <laughs> and an interesting thing that happened with Damon. I think this happened in the actually right before that scene where I forgot it was one of those King's Guards who was a twin, and he killed his brother. And Damon was giving him crap about Eric and Arik. Yeah, 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 yeah. The and twins. So, and so Damon was giving him crap, and he's just like, "Dude, I'm here." Yeah. <laughs> like like I, I, I went against my own blood to yeah. come to fight for well, you. Well, like, they, they haven't killed each other yet. Oh, they haven't. So, okay. so, so like they, they've just chosen opposite sides. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the corrections. Um, Spoiler yeah, much. <laughs> Eric and Arik. Everybody dies. Okay. <laughs> everyone dies. Everyone's fucking everyone. Well, uh, <laughs> well, what, 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 what's funny about Eric and Arik is that. Like they're legends in Game of Thrones, and if you're a book fan, you know about like the the epic battle that the two of them have, yes. and how it ends, and it's yeah. like so like poignant and tragic. Well, I don't want to know about it. Depending yeah, on I don't, I don't, I don't know either. I don't know either. Don't tell me anything. Yeah. Keep your spoilers to yourself. So, so, people. Basi so basically, with Damon, he's able to get something. He says it's a transaction, and it gets him the access he needs to get back into King's Landing. But here's another thing that. The Damon scene illustrates those gold cloaks. They'll never turn on him. Oh no! Yeah. No. Yeah. He was the commander of the gold cloaks. He Damon, created right? the gold. He yeah. created the gold cloaks. If yeah. I'm mistaken. Yeah. So let's. I'm going to speed run through this little section here because we kind of already talked about it early on because we were so excited about the show. Are um, we blood so, and cheesing. So Rhaenyra comes in. <laughs> <laughs> she shows up. Everybody's like, "Oh, the queen is here. The queen of the Endals. The this, that." And she three lines or three words. Uh -huh. I want Aemon. Yeah. And that's it. And, and then she Damon walks out. Takes that and Damon's and like, not, oh, okay, it's and, game. Yeah. And not in the Targaryen way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And uh Ew, gross. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? At and this then, point, how are you discussing about this? <laughs> and uh and and Damon is like, oh, game on, let's yeah. go. And then he He's been dying to kill somebody. Yeah. Yes. So he goes down, talks <laughs> to the white worm, and she, he's like, Look, I'll give you your freedom if you tell me how to get to Aemon. And she does her thing. Like, oh. okay, I know the rat catcher. I know he's got a gambling problem. Go here, pay this gold cloak off and pay this dude off, and you'll have your way. And he's like, okay. And that's exactly what he does. Goes down to King's Landing, sneaks in well, the somehow. Gold, the gold cloak Well, they go like, underneath the, the, the castle into the... Is it the Tyrion Lannister tunnel? Yeah, it's, that it's the tunnels about? down there. Underneath yeah. the castle. At, Maker's apparently, Holocaust. nobody in that actually lives there knows about. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> so, they, they, these were basically the secret passages made by Magar when Magar's hold fast. Right. Yeah. 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 So everyone knows about them, but mm -hmm. nobody knows like how to... 
how to yeah. navigate, how to navigate them, them. Yeah. Or, or how to get into them. Yeah. 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 So he bribes the rat catcher and a gold cloak. Well, he doesn't have to bribe the gold cloak. The gold cloak's just like, fuck the king. Yeah. 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 Well, he, well, he, he said he, a fuck he, auto, he still, right? He still bribes him. Oh, okay. yeah. in, right. in the book, it's a it's a member of the, uh, it's a gold cloak who lost his cloak. So mm -hmm. like he's, he's like down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they go in and they work their way. Now he says very specifically, that's not what happened. Aemon Targaryen. Mm -hmm. He's got one eye. Yeah. He's of fighting age. Yeah. He shouldn't be that hard to find. And he's going to put up a fight, so be ready for it. They made this. They changed it. Much easier that, to digest okay. for the show. So let just, me. Just that's all I'm so going to say. Let me run through what the show says, yeah. and then we'll go through the book. Okay. But like, they go in there, and these freaking doofuses. They're idiots. Just. Complete dumbass. What the fuck did that dog do to you? Yeah, I know. Why did he kick the dog? I, know. I think they were like, "Look, this guy's a bad guy. Kick up the dog." Like, yeah, well, yeah, sure we knew he's a bad we guy. We got it. Let's make sure that he's pitch black <laughs> yeah. in the audience. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no gray. Make sure yeah. nobody feels bad for this guy because yeah. we're gonna do stuff to him. Yeah. Um, that's basically what it was. <laughs> so they 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 go in there and they, they for whatever him. reason they get to Eamon's room, but he's not there anymore. He was he was hanging out with uh, Chris and Cole, right? Yes. Talking like strategy and yeah. like looking yeah. at the map and having a good time. Hanging out, being dudes. You hanging think out, being dudes. Eamon Targaryen is just hanging out in his room. He's strategizing. Like yeah, Darn. he's not. He's not the fun. He's not the fun type. Yeah. Um. So he. <laughs> he does have some flair. Yeah. He's yeah. Sapp they were, they were his plotting. little sapphire. They were, bling. They, were they were plotting. They were plotting their plotting their, 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 their war, their which is fine, man. Good. Good for you. Uh, but they're not there anymore in that room when the rat catcher and the and the gold cloak guy get there. And, and they, so and, and so they, they go they go, well, we gotta find, we gotta they, find and, somebody. And, and they add a little wrinkle because I guess certain levels of the red keep, only certain people are allowed there. So the rat yeah. catcher's freaking out at first. He's like, I'm not the rat catcher who goes on this. And then Blood has to basically slap him around a bit to get him to Is that his real name is Blood and Cheese? No. That's no. nobody knows <laughs> what their names are. They're just forever remembered as Blood and Cheese because he was a, a <clears throat> Gold cloak, a fighter. He, okay. Blood and the rat catcher, cheese. Oh, blood and cheese. Blood yeah. and cheese. Uh, so the dynamic <laughs> Pod, duo. Podcast coming soon. <laughs> blood, <laughs> blood and cheese. Show. Blood and cheese. Brought show. to you by Lisa Back, <laughs> Back to Hot D. <laughs> um, they go in there, and this, of course, it's classic Game of Thrones, classic HBO. They got to take things to the level where you're just like, Oh, oh God! God, I don't feel good about this right Are now. They're really oh. doing that. Yeah. Until we tell you what really happened. It's actually, go, it's actually worse. Yeah, yeah. They go into the nursery. They find the the mother of the two children, who's Helena. Like, she, she, Helena. She's hanging out with her kids, putting them to bed or whatever. And they say, "Tell us which one is the boy." Because they can't tell because <laughs> because they can't look. Because they're Targaryens. Friends. Well, that would, that would be that would be creepy to do on. Well, they said lift yeah. up his skirt. Yeah, didn't he say lift? Yeah. Like, look yeah. at him. Check it out. He's like, no, uh, shit, tell us. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's super weird. I don't that want to is, do that. Yeah. No, cutting the baby's head off is not weird. But looking at it, we're gonna let it, her live, and then she's gonna tell people it's looking for a dick. It's yeah, fucking weird. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you get puppies, you, know, you gotta check. You gotta just lift the leg up, you know. <laughs> so, oh, okay, we're good. Does to they go. got a dick? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think the doctors do? <laughs> They're born. That's true. Anyway, that's true. As um, mad as no doctor. <laughs> no. no. So they this this is a gruesome scene, and it goes just. Well, the thing was, they didn't show anything. That's what yeah. we yeah. hear. You can hear that. Yes. Yeah. No. Hear the song. Listen, dude, the baby is screaming. That's, well, it's actually and, a toddler. And then it stops. Toddler. Yeah, toddler is screaming, yeah. and then it stops and because so she, they cut it. And so like, she takes Whoa. she takes Jahara and pieces out of there, yeah. and goes to walk in on her mother riding the coal train. Yes. <laughs> The cold train. Yeah. The cold train. I like it. I like, it. I like that. <laughs> right in the cold train. <laughs> well, you know what, what's funny that about, crispy cold about train. this scene oh, is, is that uh, so blood and cheese make her choose, like point out, like you know who who's the boy, mm -hmm. and so with no other choice, she like points out the child, and it's a uh, you know princess bride uh, Vicini game of wits uh, mm -hmm. moment where they're like, wait a minute. She wouldn't actually point to the child that we want because she's trying to trick us. So we should kill the other one. And it's like, no, no, she's telling the truth. We should kill this one. And I, I just thought that there yeah. was, that was Pretty like good. a moment of, of humor. Almost. Pretty good. Yeah. I would clearly not choose the <laughs> one. That, yeah. that was hilarious. Yeah, it was very so, funny. Hilarious. So she runs in, is holding Jahara, and then she basically just says, they, they killed, killed the boy. boy. Yeah. Now, okay. That doesn't. So here's, okay. So here's a lot of problems I have. I'm going to. Sorry, I'm going to go on a mini rant. Go. This is a problem I've had actually with Game of Thrones. So make sure if you're going to rant, make sorry. sure you're close. Good call. Um, in feudal society, in monarchy, there's an heir and there's a spare at least. Yeah. So you have multiple boys just because, I mean, people aren't going to live long sometimes. So mm -hmm. you've got to have some backups. Look what happened mm -hmm. to Harris. So this is a problem that happened in with the Tyrells in Game of Thrones. Loras was the oldest of three boys. There was four kids. So you had... 
Darlin and Willis, in D Dorne, the Martells. Tis Tristane, who was Doran's kid, he was the youngest of three kids. There was an older boy before him. And they also don't care about gender when it comes to the line of succession. But either way, there was another boy ahead of him. So in the books, Aegon has three children. He's got the twins, Jahara and Jaharis, and then he has a younger son, Maelor. So in the books, I think the twins are like nine, six, six, six and yeah. then the Maelor is like three. two. He's three. three. Yeah, he's three. Right. Yeah. So he's the so the th the youngest child is the age of the child that we're in the show. Yes. Yes. Okay. So basically, blood and cheese. They're a lot more brutal in terms of how many people they kill to get to there. And oh. specifically, Damon said, "A son for a son. You take one of Aegon's sons." Particularly yeah. Jaehaerys. He didn't send them for Aemon. No. He sent them for those kids. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. yes. And so they get there, and actually, Alicent was actually present because what happened was they went to Alicent's room because Helena always came in with the kids to yes. say good night. So yes. they laid there and wait, and they like bind and gag Alicent, so she has to watch this whole thing. Whoa! And Whoa. so, and so, what made it even worse was that and they killed her maid too. They killed her maid. Yeah, that's the thing. They strangled her. Yeah. And so, what happened was that Blood and Cheese then said because they they weren't expecting two. So there's kids. two boys. They weren't expecting and two a girl. Boys. Mm -hmm. So they said, "You have to choose which boy dies. that we're going to kill." And, and Helena is screaming, kill me instead. And they're like, no, we have to kill a son. You're not a son. You have to cause, choose. Because they said, Whoa. if you don't choose, we're going, like, blood is going to yeah. do something to your daughter. He said, if you don't choose quick, he's going to get bored and he's going to grape your daughter. We, we already said the word <laughs> okay, fine. 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And so then what happens <laughs> is that, and, then, and, then, and so then what happens, Helena then chooses Mailer. One, he's despair. Two, he's too young to understand. Mm -hmm. So here's what cheese does. Goes to Maelor. Hear that, boy. Your mother wants you dead. <laughs> and then Kills blood the behead. Then blood beheads Jaharis anyway. Wow, oh, that would have been so much more yes! badass. Yes. Yeah. Why'd they nerf it for the show, man? <laughs> what? So, and then after that, Helena is so distraught that it breaks her brain. This yeah. This kid knows that she picked him for death. She can never look at him again. She gives her kids to Alicent to raise. Yeah. And Alicent's a shitty mother. Yeah. Whoa, that would have been so. I, it, right. That's why I got so mad because I'm just like it would have been so, like I get there's certain things that are better when translated. Sure. Get yeah, certain yeah, yeah. changes. You got to make a couple changes. Yeah, and but I completely seems... understand, but that should not have been touched unless they have a plan for that third kid. But he's not there. Not yet. No, we should no, be able to see him. If he's third... not there now, he's he, not. He coming. wasn't even mentioned. Well, because he's not born. But what if he? What if like? Later on in the season, she gets pregnant and they're going to pop out another kid. I don't think it's going to no. happen. There's a lot of stuff that happens quickly. Okay. And I think that if they haven't done this yet, they're not going to. And again, it makes zero sense. Why is there not a spare anyway? It's right. It's dumb. I don't know. It's just bad writing. <laughs> bad go, writing. We go from good writing to bad writing. Yeah, this, just willy nilly. This show is genius. Well, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, let me just hit me. What's your, yeah, what's your thoughts so, on this? As a non book reader, mm -hmm. none of what you said. <laughs> matters to me at all Fair enough. because Fair enough. I don't care okay. and I was thoroughly entertained by this episode mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm just living in my non-book reader ignorance and I, it came off to me as mm -hmm. kind of a holy shit moment mm -hmm. pretty cool, oh, for sure. Yeah. dark mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I didn't miss it so I guess that's and why that's I, I just I, 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 when you say bad writing I say it was pretty good <laughs> Kept me entertaining, and I think and, if and, and um, I like I love it. I love what I saw, and I think it's completely fair. Yeah. Like if you had no clue about that, then it makes sense. I just I think when I saw that and I saw the change, I'm like, it would have the threads you could use with that in terms of Helena's journey, mm -hmm. in terms of Allison's journey, in terms of the kids. It just I I think Helena is is fucked up enough from what just happened that whatever they want to use her as like she goes crazy and loses her mind i think it's totally just well, she's a weirdo anyway we yeah she's already a weirdo now and then, she's gonna and then she had to edge. choose which kid to, yeah. to live or die so i think she's already gonna i think that mm -hmm. that is still intact i also think that the show is really i think very cleverly writing this feel bad for them even though they're bad line. Yeah. oh yeah for sure. and i think that if Helene, if they had done the scene as it was in the book, people would be like, oh, fuck her. She chose so, a kid to die. And the way that they did it in the show was very like, 
which which one's the which boy? Which one's the boy? But they seem to stop pulling their punches when it comes to singing. Yeah, so, yeah. I agree. I don't want them to pull their punches. No. Make them all. I don't awful. necessarily I don't need to see you lob a kid's head off. No, no. It well, I'm off, glad they didn't show that. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they didn't screen, show that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but her Sophie's Choice moment, I think, I thought was really important for her. In yes, the book. I you, think you have so to go watch family friendly shows like Star Trek to watch babies get beheaded. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened in Star Trek. It, it absolutely did. I oh, was more you. upset about the, I had a stronger reaction when they kicked the dog than when they killed the <laughs> Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yeah. I got so annoyed. I went, oh, oh my no. God. Oh, we almost, <laughs> on one thing we almost forgot, there was a mini reunion, even though, again, she didn't say anything in the scene too, which was, again, well done. When Jaharis came back and reunited with his That mom. was so beautiful. It was very akin yeah. to the Rob Stark, uh, Catelyn Stark scene. Sure. In, game, in the second se season? It, in second the first season. End of the first season. Okay. It was the season finale for, for season one of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. I like that moment too. Yeah. He was trying to be professional and like report what he's he did. To be the heir. Yeah. He's and, her heir. And they just like broke. They both broke. Yeah. And he's like, he saw his mom and she was already into his. Yeah. It was a rough. But now. Yeah. And I just want to point out uh, uh, he, <laughs> Hold on, so baby. he's been betra betrothed to um, Bela. Yes. Bela. Bela. Mm -hmm. Bela. Mm -hmm. uh, since they were babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's fucking ride or die for him. She oh, yeah. has an opportunity to save herself, and she is like, "I will stand by you to the end." She, she stands fucking on loves him. Stands on business. Yeah. Cool. What See, were you gonna say? I was gonna say, but now Prince Damon is in another bad spot because he hired the two fuck ups of King Landing <laughs> to go up there and for a job. Yeah. Which they didn't Botched. do. No, they didn't do it. At they all. didn't do anything closely, even remotely close to what they were supposed to do, yeah. and it's gonna have. Worse ramifications f at, 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 of all of this than what would have happened. You know, yeah. it's not like the guy they were going after was the heir to the throne. No, and it's, this is just going to send the king just ex exactly yeah, over the fucking yeah. edge. And, 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 and now, and now, and now, I feel kind of bad for this asshole king that I don't want to feel show bad for. That's what they want you to Now, now I understand his motivation for just. Scorched Fuck everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing also with Allison too, one thing that we saw throughout the episode is that there was still, and actually that was another thing that Aldo was using against her, is that she still has affection for Rhaenyra. And she feel and she actually lit a candle for Luceris right. in the great in this mm -hmm. great set. Right. And so she's been writing letters to Rhaenyra yeah. this whole time. Rhaenyra's like, Fuck you. Yeah, and so this will probably be the thing that severs their relationship for, for good. This yeah, is her grandchild, you know. So, but it was an un was an un unsanctioned hit, basically. I mean, she yeah. said, "I want this guy," but they didn't get that guy. They didn't. Yeah, it just, I don't it, was just know. it was. He hired two knuckleheads. Yeah, and he should he should take a lot of heat for doing that. Oh, he will. We saw in the weeks to come. Yeah, oh, I didn't watch that part. I don't. I don't spoil myself for the next episode. Yeah. I don't watch the, the the next week in Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, let's do final thoughts. It's been about an hour. It's been a great discussion. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll get more polish at this as we go. I'm sure. It's been a while since we did the show. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a minute yeah. since we've done a TV show. Uh, but let's do some final thoughts on uh on season one. For me personally, I thought that was a banger of an episode. I thought as a, a season opening, it was exactly what I wanted. I don't need overly crazy dragon fighting and I don't need crazy sex scenes. But you want it. Not I, yet. I want, I want yet. We're going to get, I want salt, some. Salt, salt and pepper that stuff in there. You're but not for, mad if you get it. But for an opening <laughs> scene or an opening episode, it was all just straight into the politics. Mm, yes. and, and that's, that's what everybody loves about Game of Thrones. What we like about it's what we like about it. So thank yes. you for doing that. It is so nice. This is the only kind of politics I want to. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Fake, <laughs> po fake fantasy politics. Exactly. <laughs> Over the last, Two years since this show was last on. Yeah. We've been inundated with nothing but shit. Right. Yes. Absolute dog shit. Dog shit. Fucking TV. Yeah. I, I can't even come up with the, the words <laughs> about how bad episodic television has been. Especially speculative. From all these bullshit streaming services, yeah. all the networks that don't do nothing but King of Queens reruns. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's so nice. It's so nice. To be able to just plug into a show and go, yes, take me on a, take me on a, on a ride. Yeah. Take me and, away. And yeah. do a, a good job. And I don't give a fuck how book accurate it is because <laughs> I didn't read the books. I'm entertained. Yeah. And it's done well. So, you know, when this is all done, I have the book. I haven't read it. I'm, I'm not reading it on purpose because 
I don't want to be like you guys. Goes, wow. I think you fucking should have done this. Wow. Da, da, da. I'll, I'll watch that. I'll do that later. You no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't take that wrong. Don't okay. take that wrong. But you, you're having trouble enjoying some parts of the show this show because they change it from the books. I, I want to sit there and enjoy it. Okay. And then I will go back and I'll read the book and I'll go, okay, they changed some shit. Mm-hmm. And this probably would have been better, but I'm not upset about it at this point. Okay. You know? But enough. yeah, it's just, it's just really nice to be able to sit there and watch a show that is really good. And then when I think about, I know that this Lord of the Rings bullshit is coming out. Oh, in, God. In like seven weeks. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> then I got to go right back into the bullshit. Why do you do that to yourself? I, I don't know. And then I got to watch <laughs> that Star Wars nonsense. I ain't watching it's just like, Oh, God, no. it's just, it's just, It's just nice and yeah. refreshing to have something you to can actually chew on. Yeah. To escape. You, you know, and I, I, yeah. And have conversations like this and about have conversations yeah. about And it's it. not just yeah. like. Man, this was stupid. It, it's more like, whoa, did you hear th- this line with dialogue was really meaningful. And it, like, I, I can't, well, you know, Prince Damien is not going to go, give me the meat and give it to me raw or some <laughs> bullshit, you know, line like that. Oh, you my know, God. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 my butt. So, yeah. uh, you know, but, so, I mean, other than the issue I had with the actual execution of a son for a son, I thought it was a great episode. Mm-hmm. It was good to kind of let, it gave credence and it gave weight to Lucerus's death. Mm-hmm. And that's why initially I was like, oh, why didn't they do the thing? I'm actually glad that they waited until this episode to kill Jaharis because it would have the magnitude of Luke's death and what that did to kick off this dance of the dragons should not be understated. Sure. And it would you don't want to water it down. So I thought that a lot of the politics, a lot of the interactions back and forth were really great how Allison is feeling increasingly marginalized and even trapped, you know, because of her father, because of her son, and also because of Clubfoot. And so, yeah, I thought that a lot of that was great as terms of setup as to what's to come, because there will be dragons, there will be kinky sex. Sure, I'm sure. You're going to get all yeah. that stuff yeah. this season, but I just feel that it was a great setup. A lot of people of are about to die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the other thing that I enjoy about this show compared to most of the other stuff that's on that's out there right now on the other streamers and stuff is it feels expensive and well made yeah and it looks expensive. it looks good yeah. it doesn't look like it was made on a fucking volume yeah you know where they recycle the same shit over and over like they did yeah. at disney you, you know what i'm saying it, it, exactly it looks what you're saying. it doesn't look like and it was there's a lot of this is computer generated probably mm-hmm. most of it yeah, but it doesn't it i doesn't, love how different the dragons it look from doesn't yes. feel that way yes yeah. There's a grittiness to this. There's a realism to this. A lived, and that's in, a lived, a lived in, in feel. And that's what I love about, even though Game of Thrones we don't talk about, still had that feel <laughs> yeah. in a lot of ways. And this just feels good. And, and that's yeah. what I like about it. And going back to the, when you go to a different part of the kingdom or different kingdom, mm-hmm. you feel the difference. In the yeah. right. And even going back to the dragons, like I can't wait to see some of the new dragons. Like when we see Vermithor in his full, because we only saw his head, really. Mm. I'd love to see what Vermithor the Bronze Fury looks like. Mm-hmm. And um, we've seen Caraxes. We finally saw Syrax. We didn't see a lot of Syrax, but I know we're going to finally see uh, Sunfire. That's Aegon's dragon. Mm-hmm. So we saw, like, I think in the trailer we saw him flying, but yeah, like, it'll be fun to kind of really see dragon war for it. Mm-hmm. Like, not, Arax and Bagar doesn't count because it was like, Arax is like probably two years old or three years old, probably. And Bagar is like 200 years old almost. So. Yeah, and and Vagar was a he was a war dragon. She, he's been she, she yeah she has been to war and she's one of the oldest dragons and mm-hmm. she's also the biggest dragon. Yeah. And so That's when Aemon, you when right? you juxt huh Aemon's dragon, uh yeah. Yes, and okay. so when you juxtapose that to the dragon that Luke was riding, like uh, it's so tiny, it would be like your cell phone against a car. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and even going just real back to back to the season finale of season one. I love how they emphasize the size difference when Arax is trying to get away, and then you see like Vagar flying oh, yeah. over. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and so he was like, his, his mouth he was just... like a little hatchling. Yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He didn't stand a chance. That was yeah. such a great visual to be like, oh, there's no way this would be a fair fight. <laughs> no, yeah. exactly. Uh, Jude, final thoughts on the episode for a season one opening. Uh, I was two? very excited for it, and I continue to be excited for the next one. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, like, yeah, I have some problems with some of the changes, but you know that's always going to be me. Um, I think that um, Helena's choice, not not getting that, really strips, like, the, the despair that she's about to go into, mm-hmm. and it just takes, takes some of that away, and I want to 
I wanted her her journey to be a little more felt rather than she's just this crazy girl and she pointed at which one was the boy. It takes it just takes something from her character. Like I wanted her to have more meat and potatoes to what happens to her. And then when she just says they killed the boy, like God, it just did you didn't feel no. the it, it feels the, like she's the, crazy. You didn't feel the gravity yeah. of what just happened. And, and you know the thing too is so, sorry to just add in. No, you're good. But by not having Naylor, there was now an urgency to protect him because he is the king's heir. And now yeah. you're not getting any more kids out of Helena because she's like nutso. So it's mm -hmm. like there's an urgency to keep this kid safe because now he is the heir to mm -hmm. Aegon's throne. And I have a question about Maelor that I don't want to do yet because it might be a spoiler, but I want to ask you about it before you leave. Okay, okay sure. Kadish, final thoughts on this episode? So I think it was a good like season opener Part, part of the big criticism of season one was it was almost all set up mm -hmm. for what's about to happen. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're done with the time jumps and we're done with a lot of the kind of like more boring politicking. <laughs> now everything is cutthroat. It's Strategy. life or death. It's war. It's uh, going forward. This is going to be a very busy season. One thing that did kind of stick out to me from our conversation is how Everyone wrote off Game of Thrones after season eight because it was just so universally disliked. It was like a, one of the worst seasons of television ever made. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of money making that and basically almost killed this franchise. Mm -hmm. And to have this much excitement and, you know, deep diving into season two of a franchise of a show that basically resurrected this franchise. Mm -hmm. Uh, is is very promising. Like I I like the fact that we got rid of those idiots spinning off and watching. <laughs> yeah, and, yep. that, and that uh, Brian Condon, who I, I think is the the new showrunner, yes, he, he seems to really be taking this very seriously. And they got rid of uh, Sapo Sapowich, Sapo uh, the guy who uh, was like the the director who was involved as a showrunner in the first season. And like, they brought back Alan Taylor too. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so like uh after getting rid of of the guy who was kind of like more responsible for more of the uh like kind of wokey elements uh, of the show, I I feel like they are, are just focusing on pure like, hey, let's just tell a good story. And uh, I get the sense that George Martin is probably like happier with like this creative team than he was with the previous one. Mm -hmm. Well, he's involved with this. Uh, with I think him and Brian have like regular conversations because I know he had a falling out with Dave and Dan. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and with good cause because yeah. Dave and Dan basically believe that they were the geniuses behind the story as opposed to George. Um, Kanye comments. They they was they they did kind of they're making changes to. From the book i haven't read the book by the way like i i was a big fan of the game of thrones books and because of that i could not enjoy a single episode of the original <laughs> series because they, they made so many stupid changes yeah and they're making changes you know to, to this book as well but i feel like it's kind of interesting because the book blood and fire uh is about it's kind of like a maester's um textbook like retelling of, mm -hmm. of the history mm -hmm. And with the show, it, it's like they're showing you what actually happened as opposed yeah. to what was recorded. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting look. Like uh, we talked about how at the end of season one, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the eye patch. Uh, Amen. 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 The names are so bonkers on the show. Just, I know. It's, that's, it's just that's Damon. George. It's, just, it's just an anagram for Damon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but Amon, um, you know, like he didn't want to like kill his cousin. Mm -hmm. It was the dragon that just kind of like out of nowhere, just like, you know, Bit that dragon into and swallowed his cousin and he actually like like when it happened uh Eamon was like oh shit yeah. <laughs> so, so, so so like but you know when, when i was talking about it with jude jude was like yeah that didn't happen in the book mm -hmm. you know like like he was like straight all, up murder yeah he was straight up all about murdering that kid so it's kind of interesting to see like these subtle differences that are going on in the show as opposed to like what was actually in the book but I think it was a good start to the new season, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. And, and, another, and adding to what you said, Matt, in terms of this resurrecting the franchise, I completely agree because I think just even in the series premiere, it was just like they had this just establishing shot of where you are because they're showing mm -hmm. the mirror flying Syrax. And it was nice because it's like, wow, this feels familiar. It feels kind of like home. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it was great because, like, how this, um, how the Dance of the Dragons, I mean, it was hinted at in the book series and the game of thrones in the song of ice and fire but the first actual retelling 
was even before A Fire and Blood came out, it was actually this novella in Dangerous Women called The Princess and the Queen. Mm-hmm. And that's where you kind of had Mushroom and then you had the Maester kind Mushroom's of really back. Mushroom's such a perv. I know. <laughs> 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 and, so, yeah. And so uh, they, yeah. The, the account of Fire and Blood is told through different people. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you'll get multiple accounts depending on who's telling it. And mm-hmm. Mushroom always goes for the salacious. Mushroom will be yeah. like, they were having an orgy. <laughs> and then he had these chicks' teeth filed down so that they could bite each other. And then the other maester yes. would be like, um, cool. he, was, no. he was with his paramour. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for those who aren't familiar with the book, Mushroom is a court jester. Um, that, that Which was we've interviews. never seen. We've never seen a court jester. I want to see a court jester. Yeah. Or whatever. Oh, I wanted to say real quick, uh, one of the things that I loved about this episode was everything that happened in the North. We don't really get that detailed of an account in the book. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the changes that they made to the show that I think was really well done, that was Mm -hmm. much needed, Mm -hmm. and it really added something. And it's important because Cregan Stark is going to be very important towards the end, but I won't say anything else. All right, cool. That's it. What about you? You didn't say yours. I did. I said it was awesome. I love the politicking. (laughs) It was good. I liked it. I like it. I like it. (laughs) Good stuff. All right, folks. That's it for the show today. We will be back every week covering episode by episode as the show drops. This is my... I, this is the ideal. This is what I love. I love about nerd culture is the weekly drop. Get rid of this freaking binge model crap. Thank God. I Give know. me something to chew on for a week and then watch another one on Sunday night. You get it. That's it's how it stuff. stays in the pop culture yes. longer is when yes. you kind of just let it marinate throughout. Like, there would be no week. House of the Dragon. I want Dragon. it all right now. <laughs> there would be no House of the Dragon being even made if if the original Game of Thrones show came out sh- it, seasonally. Was it a if it just was a drop the whole thing? Yeah. Never would happen. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. If you're a fan of the show, comment below. Uh, The more we get into this, the more we're going to be relying on the comments and looking at things and checking out what the uh, other parts of the fan base are are talking about. So uh, check us out. Subscribe, like if you're new here, and uh, buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Thank you so much. Stay salty.